Okay, so if you're watching this video, then you're probably thinking about getting an eSIM. Great choice. They're a fantastic way to access cheap roaming data while you're abroad without needing a contract or physical SIM. Basically, they're awesome, and I'm going to show you how to get a free one courtesy of GigSky. I'll also show you just how easy they are to install and set up, and the first thing we must do is download their app. So let's type GigSky into the Apple App Store and click download. Also, if you're a Google person, they have an Android app as well. And while that's downloading, let me explain what an eSIM actually is, and I promise I'll keep this quick. So inside your phone is an embedded SIM chip. Think of this as a digital SIM card that allows you to access multiple networks. It's kind of like streaming services and DVDs. No longer do we buy a DVD just to watch a film. Instead, we subscribe to Netflix and get access to loads of movies. Or in this case, we no longer have one SIM card in our phone to access one network. Instead, we can use a provider like GigSky to connect to multiple networks across the world. And depending on how much data you need, it might even be cheaper than Netflix. So let's open the GigSky app, and we just want to begin by entering where we're traveling to. In this case, I'll type Japan. Here we have a list of available eSIMs, but we want to ignore these and just select 100 megabytes, free trial, seven days. Next, you have to create an account. Once that's done, you'll just need to verify your email address before being redirected to this page. So here we have the order summary. As you can see, it's free and you don't need to enter any card details and all you have to do is tap buy plan. Once that's done, we just assign a name to the device that's using the eSIM. For this, I'll put my iPhone. Now, here we have the eSIM. And if you're ready to install, then go ahead and tap install eSIM. And just before we go any further, please make sure that you have a stable internet connection. This is really important because if your internet drops during the installation, then it may fail and you won't be able to reinstall it. Once this installation advice is loaded, you can go ahead and tap continue and then allow, and then again tap continue. At this point, it should say activating, and this could take a few minutes, so please be patient and don't close this window. And while we wait, I'll quickly tell you about Manito's new eSIM comparison engine, which allows you to filter through all of the different providers that are available. So there are a lot of eSIM companies, and you could waste hours trying to find the cheapest or the best. Instead, visit Manito.com. I'll put a link in the description box. Enter a few details, such as where you're going and how much data you'll need, and we'll tell you which provider will be the cheapest and best for your trip. We get all of the information directly from eSIM companies, so we're basically doing the research for you and providing you with results relevant to your trip. It'll definitely save you some time, and possibly some money as well. Now, hopefully your phone will now say mobile plan setup complete. If so, go ahead and tap done, and we're now going to select our default line. Here we have two options, primary, which is our normal regular SIM, and secondary, which represents our newly installed GigSky eSIM. This might say something different for you. For example, it might be called mobile data, but whatever it says, primary is your main SIM, and the one beneath is your GigSky eSIM. And for the default line, I recommend keeping this as primary. This eSIM does not come with a telephone number. So if you still want to be able to make and receive calls and texts, then keep this as primary. But don't worry, this won't affect your data usage and it has nothing to do with roaming. If we tap continue, we now get to choose whether we still want to receive iMessage and FaceTime. Keep this as primary. That way you can still use these things, but don't worry, your phone will use your GigSky eSIM for data, and that's because if we tap continue, we're now going to choose our new eSIM as the default line for data. So with that selected, if you were to send or receive a message or FaceTime, then your phone would use the GigSky eSIM. Also, really important side note, make sure allow mobile data switching is toggled off. Tap continue, and now you may or may not see this prompt depending on which iOS you're using, but because the eSIM doesn't have calls or texts, just go ahead and select use primary as the preferred line. And now our free eSIM is installed. But before we do anything else on the app, we need to do some housekeeping. So go to your phone settings, click mobile service or cellular, and then under SIMs, tap secondary. And here we want to change the mobile plan label to something more recognizable. So tap custom label and rename it. In this case, I'll just call it GigSky hyphen Japan. Now, if we're ready to start roaming, then just toggle data roaming to on. If I did this now and I was in Japan and connected to a local network, then the eSIM would activate and my seven day validity period would commence. 
obviously I'm not in Japan, so this won't happen. Now we can go back to mobile service and click mobile data and just double check that our eSIM is selected. So this means that our phone will only use that one for data. And if you want extra assurance that you won't be charged by your normal carrier, then you could turn data roaming off on your primary SIM and even turn it off entirely if you wanted to. Just tap primary and then toggle data roaming to off or like I said, you could go one step further and toggle turn on this line to off. That will switch it off entirely, but if you do decide to do this, just remember you won't be able to make or receive calls and texts. So that's everything set up, but realistically, you'll probably need more data because the free eSIM only has 100 megabytes, which is actually enough to do some light browsing or messaging, and if you're really savvy with your Wi-Fi usage and pre-download navigation maps, then you might actually get away with it. But let's be honest, if you're going away for longer periods of time or you just want a bit more wiggle room to roam, then you'll need more data. So if we go back to the app, tap my plans and then top up on the eSIM that we want to top up, we can now choose a data plan. For Japan, we have a number of options, including unlimited. And if you're unsure on how much data you'll need, I like to recommend two to five gigabytes per week. Really, if you're just browsing the web, navigating and doing some light video streaming, then five gigabytes should be plenty. And for Japan, it's only eight pounds 99, which is actually cheaper than the standard Netflix plan and even cheaper when you add Manito's 10% discount code, Manito10. Now just remember that the eSIM won't start until you connect to a supported network. And once you do begin using it, just keep an eye on this bar inside the app to track your data usage. So if you haven't yet got yourself a free GigSky eSIM, then please consider using the affiliate link in the description box below. And don't forget to use our coupon MONITO10. And let me know if you have any questions. I know eSIMs can be confusing, particularly the installation process. So if you need anything at all, just use the comment section below. I'm here to help. And thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.